So th this is a program called Reality Adlib Tracker. It's my program of choice. And if you're not familiar with trackers, I would suggest getting familiar with those first because this is going to get kind of weird otherwise. Okay, so uh, when I start a track, um, a lot of times I like to start with the uh, bass or drums. So let's just put a bass drum in here. I can show you kind of how we do drums on the Adlib. Okay, so it's a nice like kind of a uh, bass drop here. Well, bass drop, bass drum. You can go like that, you can just go a little lower. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's kind of still like, you know, clubbing seals kind of territory. It's pretty good. Let's give it a little bit more of a punch to it. You can add like a click to a bass drum to really... Yeah, that's pretty good. Let me make it decay a little bit more. One trick I always use too um, when I do these is use a sustain, but by default, the sustain is all the way down. Um, so, which means that as soon as it gets to sustain, it releases at the release rate. So, we can do make this kind of squarish kind of sound. See how it kind of drops off instantly? Well, by squarish, I mean, you know, there's no attack and almost no decay. Just kind of, it's like, a, you know, the, the envelope's like a squ square shape almost. Uh, and good for snares too. That's pretty good. Uh, let's let's turn the speed down to uh, three here. So we got boom, boom. That's why putting a snare down. Snares are, snares are always really tricky in um, Adlib because what you do is you need two channels. And um, I'll show you why. Um, you know, if you look at like a TR909 or 808 or any of those old school analog uh, drum machines, or even like an Electribe uh, ER1, um, which I got sitting next to me, uh, you know, what you have is a snare made out of both noise and um, tone. And the tone gives it a body. Um, you know, without that body, it just sounds like someone's spitting. Uh, so let me give you an example. It's really amazing to me how few people kind of got this right back in the day. So, you know, here's like a really weak snare. Let's make it briefer, even. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's your spit snare. So you can go like... Yeah, let's make this like... Doo, doo, doo. There you go. Okay, but you know, let's um, co kind of copy these settings from the snare part. Okay, so this decay is going to be seven. And like with the bass drum, we'll give it a little bit of a tap. And you can actually go pretty hog well with the tap. You can add a little bit of feedback too to hear that. Get those higher clicks in there. And it's also a matter of mixing. And I like to go for like F sharp. Uh, one because it's close to 400 hertz, like a 909, uh, which cuts through the mix very well. And um, also because it's not a note I'm planning on really using a whole lot in this composition. It makes it sound very kind of atonal, which is what you want for a snare. Listen to that. It's, so yeah, it immediately is much better sounding than my previous snare. Um, so let's see, next step, you know, one thing I like to do is um, you add a little hi-hat action and you do this by making these little blips here. And um, I think that, you know, certain ratios work better than others. You can, you, you, what, ideally you kind of want a cyclic noise sound and honestly that's easier to do on the real hardware than it is to do on DOSBox here. That's kind of a nice clank though. You know, you, you want that kind of clanky metal hi-hat sound. You know, you don't want it to just be noise. And this is, this is very emulators or sample rate or hardware dependent. Um, but this is this is good, we'll, we'll stick with this. You know, we can go like, 
and you, you know, very the velocity too. Uh, C on this is the velocity effect. Copy the snare. You're going to be using cut and paste a lot because every uh, drum pretty much has an effect attached. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. So we got this nice, um, you know, let's, let's add, open a hi-hat. So what you want to do is copy these settings. I will just save and restore my, you know, I have these crappy temp instruments. And you change the decay. You can actually do that. So I'm, us I'm using that uh, sustain trick. This actually only sustains if sustain is off. So good, like. And we're, you know, I'm just gonna try to make an example song. So we're just, we'll just be lazy here and copy that. Yeah, I can't be that lazy. We got this kind of cool hip hop beat now. That's pretty dope, right? Okay, that's not a bass line. Um. Yeah, so you can um, really beef up this bass too with adding odd frequencies like you know use these other wave types to, to your advantage here it's really beefing it up to make it kind of being those auto harmonics in and feedback kind of sharpens the sound so it gets more and more saw like well then I get nasties but That's kind of a good sound. Oh, let's let's clone this pattern. We're gonna make the bass line kind of come in. Line, I think. What? There you go. Yeah, as an all, you know, my um, I was off by one, one of the rows, so it was kind of screwed up. Okay. So funk, funk is what, who said I, I don't know I forgot who said this but funk is the omission of uh, uh, notes <laughs> which I kind of like uh, th we can vary it up like that's kind of cool so. Uh, what we can do now, so we know we have two patterns with the bass. Uh, I, I added that lick under the second one. We can now um, go and put um, some chords down. Let's see. some more harmonics and you can you can change this wave type too you, you just get some DC offset sometimes if you do that but you get much more complex tones it's kind of worth it and you can add a little feedback for more complex tones also and let's add a little bit of vibrato uh, to the mix
Um, and this is okay. But, you know, there's a trick I want to show you. Um, and that is doing stacked fits. And what I mean by that, this, this, you see this a lot in Genesis games. Um, and what you do is that you make a fifth sample. So I'll show you how. So there's two to five, I think, is a fifth. But here's a trick. Algorithm on. Um, let's make it a different wave. I'll show you in a second. I think a two to three is what I was thinking of. Two to five is more like a piano, I think, when you combine them. So now, now what you have is you have two independent um, oscillators. which is kind of boring, but let's add feedback so that as it fades, you get fewer overtones. That's probably pretty good. And so you're just like, well, we just have a fifth. Uh, how are we gonna make it a seventh? Do it like this. So this is D and A and F and C. Yeah, so now we're getting jazzy. I, I kind of think of this as auto jazz, you know, where you can make different chord shapes using these layered fifths, and it's always super jazzy. Um, I can't remember if there's a fifth or a fourth. Let's see. You can also you can also do this. Which are, that's kind of nice here. I'm gonna drop that down an octave and use that. I think that's the fourth one. Okay, this is pretty, getting pretty, pretty groovy. Ooh, can we add more feedback? I if we turn it down a little bit, we can add that kind of more sharp. Yeah, that's better. Nah, that's just nasty. That's too nasty. I think this is probably pretty good. But it's kind of mudding up the bass, uh, you know. Um, so I'm going to drop that back down and pump that back up an octave where we were before. I, I think as nice and dense and um, as that sounds, it's still kind of, you know, a part of mixing is coming up with a good composition. Uh, if you have notes that are kind of in the same range, uh, it won't be a good composition, it, and it'll muddy up your mix. And I add a release to this. Okay. And then um, let's see which one. Let's copy the other part. You know, the B, the B bass line. Copy the chords, and we can just do a variation on the end of this too. So is that So now, now we have this whole sequence. Let's let's look at the whole thing from start to finish. It's pretty cool. Uh. What what? <laughs> I just do the same chord over and over. Yeah, that's better. Okay. You notice I, I kind of reflexively save, and, and that's be, I was because I was traumatized as a child by using floppy disks, which, you know, you work on a song for hours, and you uh, go to save, and it goes, grind, 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 and you're screwed because you can't even... Some programs you can't even click cancel. You know, just your your hose. You can't even go back to your program and get another disc out. So I'm like a total freak. I always save. Uh, I start saving different, you know, backup files. Like you know, if you look at my uh, hard drive here. It's got like a uh, yeah. Look at all these different variations. You know. Anyway, um, 
now we can add a lead, and I'll show you a few lead tricks. Um, and one thing I want to mention too is on this chord, if we go for the other traditional FM chord style that is, you know, algorithm is off, um, you know, where we have an FM sound instead of two additive sounds, you know, that, that is, uh, the oscillators aren't independent. Um, one thing I like to do is, uh, this takes a lot of channels, but detune. Um, and at a fast speed, you can do that. But I think I'll show you that with a lead. So let's put a lead down. And you know the attack attacks from where it left off. So if you never decay, you don't really get that attack again. I don't know if that's just a quirk of Rad Tracker or if it's the Adlib card. I kind of like this though. Typically get the K slower, so you can be like um. I always forget, you know. So put them under two note is three, up is one. So let's start sliding up and then finish up with the. Uh, And Rad Tracker has a quirk too where you can't do um, vibrato. So um, you end up with uh, this kind of manual vibrato by sliding up and sliding down. That's going to be hard to hear because of the decay on this. That, that's more like it. I, I like to do, do a guitar style vibrato. And what we can do too is you can slide down at the end of every riff, like, you know, like a next slide. So, I, and again, you can't hear that because of the decay. That's okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 you'll hear that soon enough. Uh, here's a, here's an old tracker trick is you notice I'm cutting the volume to 40 and not to zero. Um, um, that gives you a little bit of an echo. Um, and one thing you can do too is you can put a different note here. Like if I had previously played, uh, you know, I can I can put. You can you hear that? That's it, it, um, that's just sort of the lead. So you, you have a real echoey sound. Like you know, here you have A5. Let's put the A5 here, but put it quieter. So you have a real like um, you know um, echoey sound on one channel, and I want to show you uh, too then uh, how to thicken this guy up. So um, so notice we're sliding down a little bit from the other channel. There's, there's extra note slide ups in, and you gotta do it for each note, which is kind of annoying. And I, I think I'm gonna cut out the echo on this channel. So, thought you even sound thicker, right? Um, oh, did I just put that in? I didn't like that. Okay. I put some note slides in. So it's more slowy. Maybe like. Do, 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 do. Start with all the channels now. Let's do like that. Boom. 
I think I actually wanted to go like that. That's wrong. I was like. I cut it out right here. I don't want that note. And then, uh, then you know, what's great about these two channel sevens is that you can start experimenting really fast with them, which is something you can't easily do when you're typing into the tracker without a keyboard next to you if you're using the mono notes. Yeah, uh, note length counts for a lot too. Uh, a lot of people, I think, they go for legato a lot, uh, which is nice. But um, one issue it has is that uh, it's not as expressive. So if you're cutting notes short, cut them various lengths depending on what you want to um, emphasize. Uh, so let's see, see it now. I always just repeat this because I'm, I'm being lazy. I just want to show you more stuff. We can do it. Uh, put you know back to that. Uh. One thing you can do too on the FM, which is kind of nice, is, is um, you know I just duplicated this this channel and detuned it, uh, but you can you make another instrument that's softer. Um, has more bass, uh, or maybe even a different timbre altogether, and then it'll kind of make you make this layered. Uh, you, can, you can have like a four oscillator uh, sound, um, and you know you can get do a lot on the OPL too by layering. Uh, I made a slap bass. You're not supposed to be able to do slap basses with this, but uh, with some kind of uh, careful layering, you're able to make that you know get that illusion. Um, so this is a powerful synthesizer. You know, it's too bad that you know uh, I feel like in the in the DOS days it was as kind of. Uh, not used to its fullest potential here. And this is with Rad Tracker. Rad Tracker is very limited. It's it's nowhere close to uh, other music programs and capabilities. Like, there's not even a vibrato, as I showed you there. Um, you know, so you can do even more with uh, something like Adlib Tracker, too. Yeah, this is very Final Fight. <laughs> it just makes you want to, like, you know, go beat people up in the street or something. And one thing you can do, too, and this is kind of late for this, but, uh, you know, vary the velocity of your hi-hats more. Um, I like to go 4-5, four, 4-5. Five, four, five. Get that kind of accenting in there. Um, you know, just pretend that you're the drummer and you're hitting that hi-hat. How, how are you going to be hitting it? You're not going to be hitting it at the same time every time, right? Hope not. Very cool. Okay. So, um, let, let's do a simple chord progression and, uh, we can add some excuse to add more instruments to the mix, right? So take this guy, duplicate it. Um, and the first thing you I want to do is, you know, first let's remove that. We don't need that lead. I probably could have copied an earlier pattern. So I just copied blank space over it. Uh, get rid of the chords. Do, 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 do. I think that's our, yeah, that's our, um, okay. So, um, so,
very indecisive with uh, these the octave of these chords. So that you know that was pretty quick, uh, and thanks in a lot in part to my uh, fifth samples. It's not a good marimba here. Uh, Adam is great at marimba. You you, you know, the the best sounding PC game soundtracks I think were, uh, uh, you know, for Adlib were often <laughs> you know marimba and trumpet because they're easy to do well. Uh, drums are hard. Uh, you know, they take synthesizer knowledge. Um, you know, convincing basses. Uh, for you know for a lot. A reason I can't fathom, a lot of times you've got these really overdriven sounds, like, you know, I'm going to make one for you real quick. And you just crank that monitor all the way up. And they just play, you know, play music on it, like. And it sounds like ass, because it's just like, I don't know who thought that that would be some, you know, something this basic was acceptable, but, uh, they, they release games that sound like that, you know, I don't don't know what the deal is, but there you go. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll stop kvetching and uh, start marimbaing. Um, one thing I do want to point out before I proceed is that this modulation, that this uh, pitch, it starts at zero on Rad Tracker. Uh, I believe that's actually half the pitch of the uh, sound, but I always opt for the lower ratios. I always opt to keep this at zero. Um, I, I feel like it gives it actually a deeper sound. <laughs> Yeah, so you can do some cool effects by bumping up the modulator on the carrier and not the... Okay. But for this, we'll... So... Doing a sustain trick again. Sharper, even. That's good. Uh, one to six sounds good. How about zero to six? Okay, keep it like this. Let's try this again. Yeah. Mm, maybe remember just doesn't fit in the song that well. Oh, let's do a bouncy bass line. do that trick I, I was you know we're gonna be like you know c4 so you know you do it four down four down so boom 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 and you have to see the four and yeah, because uh, like another why not You'll see how, how this kind of affects sound in a second here. So it gives it 
get a little bit more depth to the sound. So, and, and we're using the one channel echo. So we got through the... that vibrato here's another cool way of doing the lead uh, you can detune and echo it kind of gives you a nice uh, you might want to fade it in and out but you know to avoid the kind of harsh on onsets Again, of course it doesn't work because it's not rigged to work like that. Okay. Okay, so um copy, go go back to the you know, we'll go back to the kind of the A part and add the bells. add that echo back and it's a little bit tedious Four. the lead's gone. Yo, we can have a whole song we can listen to now. Check us out. twice like uh ding. wanna hear that again? Let's, let's start over here. I wanna play the whole thing again.
Anyway, there you go. That's a song written in uh, Rad Tracker um, in 2014. Uh <laughs>